Kevin, just checking that you can hear us. All right, cool. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening and welcome to tonight's Monroe City Council meeting. This is a regular business meeting for Tuesday, February 28th, 2023. The time right now is 7 p.m. I'm going to go ahead and request that our clerk this evening, uh, Clerk Simonson, um, call the roll. Go ahead. Council members present establishing a quorum. Fulcher, Kenny, Hanford, who's re remote, Davis, Gamble, Fisher, and Scarborough. All right, thank you very much. Councilmember Fulcher, will you please lead us on the pledge? I pledge my allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first item that we have on the agenda is under item four, announcements and presentations. Uh, 4.1 is presentation, swearing in ceremony for uh, Detective Amy Troxel. I'm gonna go ahead and acknowledge Chief Jolly, who's at the podium. Chief Jolly, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to all in attendance. Amy, if you'll come up. Mayor Thomas, council members, men and women of the Monroe Police Department, thank you for being here. Family and friends of Amy, Thank you very much for being here. And I got to meet her young daughters tonight. Phenomenal. Thank you to Judge Ness for officiating this ceremony. It is my pleasure to introduce Detective Amy Troxel. Amy joined our department from the Lake Forest Park Police Department where she served since 2007. Amy has served in many capacities in her 16 year law enforcement career. Amy has been an officer, a detective, and also a hostage negotiator assigned to the North Sound Metro SWAT team. And she still holds that job with us now. Amy uh, brought over 16 years of experience and has hit the ground running and immediately has made a positive contribution to our department. So we're very grateful. Amy received her Bachelor in Arts in Sociology from the University of Washington another u dubber, right? <laughs> and she enjoys cooking, baking, and pastries, so if you need favors, that it's a go-to. Camping, spending time with her family, I can see why, and all things Disney. So they also own ABC News. I don't know, but anyway, we can talk about that later. Please join me in congratulating Detective Troxel as she is sworn in. We are happy to have her join our department. Your Honor? Adam, her husband, Adam Troxel, will be putting on her badge. Yeah. If you would please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Amy Troxel. I, Amy Troxel. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws and the Constitution and laws of the state of Washington, of the state of Washington and the ordinances and the ordinances of the city of Monroe, of the city of Monroe, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of police officer of police officer for the city of Monroe for the city of Monroe police department police department to the best of my abilities to the best of my abilities all right congratulations thank Adam, you're not going to get out of this. This is going to be the, the this is the best part. 
So we're going to go ahead and have you pin on her badge. Thank you. And feel free to say what the words. I just want to say I appreciate the opportunity that I've been given to come and work for the Monroe Police Department. It's a community I spend time in myself with my family, so I am proud to be a part of it and working as a police officer and detective for your city. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Mayor. We'll just give a uh, just a, another minute here. Okay, cool. All righty. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure bringing on another another recruit. Uh, yep. We'll just wait just another second. Challenge we have is when the door closes, it locks. <laughs> and it's an open public meeting, so we're not going to close the door. <laughs> All right, thank you, Chief. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move on to the next item on the agenda, that's public comments. This is under item number five. This, time, this is the time set, set aside for members of the public to speak to the city council on any issue related to the city of Monroe, except any quasi judicial matter that is subject to a public hearing. Three minutes are afforded to each speaker. If you're interested in speaking this evening and you're here in the audience, please raise your hand. All right, seeing none, if you are online and would like to speak to the council, please raise your hand remotely in Zoom or hit star nine if you're on the phone. All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda. And that next item would be the consent agenda. I turn to council. I'm just gonna hit somebody's button here. Okay, council member Scarborough had it first. Council member Scarborough, go for it. Move to accept the consent agenda. Okay, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda and a second uh, from Councilmember Scarborough, a second from Councilmember Davis. Any discussion on the approval of the consent agenda? Seeing none, uh, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is item number seven, under unfinished business. This is 7.1, initial 2044 housing allocation methodology options with Kate Turtolo, our planning manager. And we will bring her forward into the panelist list. Planning manager Turtolo, you are now in the panelist list. Good evening. Thank you. Um, thank you. So this evening I am returning um, again. This is a request for um, concurrence on a methodology for Snohomish County to allocate housing. Um, the difference being, again, this is, has to do with our comprehensive plan and the state of Washington changed um, some of the housing requirements in 2021 with House Bill 1220. Uh, at your meeting back in January, on January 24th, I walked through the four different methodologies. The first being uh, the allocation is done 100% by new construction. The second allocation, I'm sorry, was there a question? No, oh, okay. Um, the second question was considered the fair share. So each jurisdiction is required to uh, provide basically the same amount based on <clears throat> what your allocation was from the last round of the comprehensive plan update. And then allocation number three was the hybrid. 
the two questions that were asked during that meeting were, could I provide a comparison of the number of units that are provided by each jurisdiction, as well as the pros and cons? And so in your packets this evening, uh, I have provided both. The pros and cons, I'll just walk through really quickly. Allocation um, A doesn't take into consideration, thank you, does not take into consideration the uh, number of housing units that Monroe is already providing, especially in that zero to 30 um, AMI. And if you go into the attachments, the second attachment is the table illustrating what we currently have. There are only two cities that are providing more housing in that very low income category that is also the public supported housing. The second, the so that that to me was a con because in my opinion, Monroe should be getting credit for what we're already providing. The second uh, methodology, method B, the concern there is that you be, the way it's um, the the way the calculations work out. There's actually a situation where cities have a negative number, and that's not realistic in the sense that the city of Monroe is not going to be per, uh, not producing housing in a particular income category because we have too much today. We will focus on the areas that we need, but we're not going to we're not going to not produce more housing. And so um, going through the information again, I I agree that I think methodology C, the hybrid method is the best of both options. Uh, we are now looking at the allocation, so it's not based on new production, but we're also getting credit for what we've already got existing in our community. So this evening, I am hoping that the council, um, if you, if, well, first off, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but I'm hoping that you can come to a consensus and uh, direct me or Lance to provide a specific recommendation to the Snohomish County Planning Advisory Committee on the um, method that the city of Monroe believes is most appropriate for our community. This information will be provided at their April meeting. Once that's done, it will be uh, forwarded on to Snohomish County tomorrow's steering committee and then ultimately adopted by Snohomish County into the countywide planning policies. So are there questions? All right, thank you very much. Um, if we could uh, put the motion back up and then I'll turn to council. Council members, are there any questions or is there a motion? Council member Fulcher, go ahead. Um, I move to direct staff to notify the Snohomish County tomorrow SCT planning advisory committee that method C, the hybrid method as described is the city's preferred 2044 <clears throat> housing allocation methodology. Give me a second. I have a motion from Council Member Fulcher, a second from Council Member Kinney for the requested action uh, under 7.1 unfinished business as stated or as typed. Um, any discussion on the motion? There being none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda now. And uh, that item would be Councilmember Reports. Go ahead and start on the end. Councilmember Scarborough, go ahead. Nothing to report tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Fisher. Nothing to report. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Hanford. I'm uh, just feeling under the weather today, so I'm home today, but nothing to report. Thanks. Thank you. Councilmember Kenny. Uh, spent a wonderful three days in Olympia with uh, Council Member Fulcher and Council Council Member Gamble and the Mayor and Ms. Knight and a variety of other folks. So I'll let them delve into that a little bit further with their reports. But also uh, Sunday evening was at Galaxy Theater for the last installment of the film series celebrating Black History Month and the uh, Monroe High School Black Student Union. Uh, Chief Jolly was there. It was great to see him. And it was just a really worthwhile film series. Uh, very educational and wonderful to be there and uh, was able to go to two out of the four of those and uh, it was just a, a really well-planned event and um, very important for the community. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Fulcher, go ahead. Um, I will also say a few words about Olympia. I think that we made some really good connections <clears throat> with our new representatives and um, just a lot of good education. So I appreciated that time. Thank you all for 
joining us and sharing your knowledge. I really appreciate anything we can soak up from you. Thank you, Councilmember Davis. Uh, nothing tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gamble. Yeah, I just would echo that I thought that the trip to Olympia was well worth the investment of time. Um, I think one of the things that was, you know, it's too, too bad Deb's not here because um, the, there's a compliment. Uh, I know there was a couple of those events that were set up or we were initiated the, uh, those, you know, those after hours dinners, networking events. And I know the discussion was, man, I wonder if anybody's going to show up. And then all of a sudden we were looking for more tables and, um, but what was really great, what came out of that was just the alignment. Um, you know, we had representation from Carnation and Duval and here and, you know, all of the surrounding areas. Um, and there was no uh, planning session ahead of time, like, hey, we all need to get on the same page with our representatives. We came to the table and all the conversations, everybody was on the same page. Uh, so that was really cool to see. I think that message also resonated. Um, but being able to touch base with our legislative contingent and then also those that are surrounding us uh, that have influence on a lot of the stuff that uh, we want to get through uh, and spent time on the five on 522 obviously uh, pretty big time. Um, I just thought it was well worth the time investment uh, that we spent and I appreciate um, Mayor and uh, Ms. Knight and I know Director Roberts was with us. Um, it was a uh, it was a very, very uh, good trip and I think we made some progress, so just got to keep doing it. Thank you. All right, uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go to staff reports now. Um, 9.1, Public Works Department. Director Rob Roberts, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. In your packet there, you'll see the uh, standard Public Works report. Just touch on a few things real quickly. Our TBD funded overlays that we do every year, so the road maintenance that we complete every year. Um, actually, we have updated the scope since I created this a couple of weeks ago. We have been advised by our consultant to cut out 146th and 169th, uh, but we are still going to budget for about $1.7 million in overlay. We're just going to do a smaller area because uh, price increases in both the uh, construction industry continue to be, I'm going to say volatile is probably the right way to put it. So we're all over the board with that stuff and, and oil goes up. Uh, shifting down to the next subject there would be the TIB grants that our city engineer, Scott Peterson, applied for and won. Uh, looks like about $866,000 in funding is coming the city's way. The first part being for an overlay of Blueberry Lane, which will be completed after the stormwater and parks project out there is complete. That's actually advertised right now. So we should be receiving bids on that project fairly soon, which is great news. Uh, and then also some crossing improvements uh, at Frylands Boulevard near those adjacent walk-up businesses that are on the, the east side of the boulevard, which again, that'll be another excellent improvement there with the ADA ramps that are in place. Uh, last thing on the list, which actually isn't on the list, but I wanted to update the council on, is over here in the corner, Derek Hahn is our new engineering services manager. Uh, Derek came to us from the Snohomish Conservation District and has been a very welcome addition in our design and construction area. Uh, his scope of work or, or kind of assignment, as it were, is to handle our private development, our civil inspections, which I know the council knows are critical for the long-term life of our infrastructure when it's being built, having those folks out there making sure things are being done correctly and corners aren't being cut. And then uh, last but not least, he'll be handling the occasional CIP project because we still haven't filled those vacant uh, senior engineer, engineer three positions that we have open. We have gotten some candidates since the new year has started, so we're, we're, we're in some interviews. Um, and then also Derek is actually working on the scope document with one of our consultants for the review of the traffic calming policy, which council had asked for uh, towards the end of last year. And we're getting to that. We expect work to start on that in April. That concludes my report. May I turn it back to you? Thank you very much, <laughs> Director Roberts. Any questions for Director Roberts? Councilmember Scarborough, go ahead. Hi, thank Hi. you for that report. Uh, thank you for fixing the sign to Kelsey Park. Park putting the E's in their village and kill. <laughs> and would like to ask you, what is what is being done on that corner? Sidewalk's been destroyed. You're redoing sidewalk? Oh, on the, that would be the northeast corner? Yes. Yeah, I believe there's some PUD activity going on there where they're undergrounding some lines. Uh, however, Mr. Hahn might know the answer to that, actually. No? Predate. Okay, well, there you go. I got it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anything further, Council Member Scarborough? 
Thank you. Councilmember Kenny, go ahead. I just wanted to register um, my delight at the uh, Frylands crossings, the pedestrian crossings. They have been needed for a really long time, and I've seen so many people run across, myself included, over the years. And uh, it's just wonderful to have those there. So another big yay for the city. So thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kenny. Any other questions for Director Roberts? All right, thank you. We're going to go ahead and move on to Parks Department report with Director Farrell. Director Farrell, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Good evening. Good evening, Council Members. Um, as you see the uh, attached uh, monthly report for last month, um, do want to draw your attention to a couple items or a few items in here. One, and you can see the nice pictures of the crew, you know, busy uh, keeping our parks maintained through this, this winter weather season. Um, also want to point out that they've done quite a bit of work at Trombley Park. Um, this this uh, this past month, um, again, um, uh, preparing that park for um, easier public access uh, from from the roads. Um, and then I have pointed out here, we uh, made a list uh, because it was uh, we had some some unfortunate act incidents and um, some vandalism and graffiti. So um, so we actually uh, focused on that because I really wanted to show the, you know, um, not only to to you but also to the to our our residents that there's a cost to to these um, acts of vandalism and whatnot and in other sort of unfortunate incidents like the car crash um, you know there's damage there's there's labor there's materials and then there's also the estimated time to repair um, I hope that this won't be a monthly thing um, and, and it shouldn't be but uh, we did have a rash of them in January, so that's why we decided to list list out um, the high, the, um, the the what the incidents that occurred. Um, and then, as a follow up to that, um, also is the on the on the good side of things, as as far as uh, continuing to be proactive, is that <coughs> we did get the uh, public video system cameras installed at Lake Ty uh, this past month as well. So, um, and that's that's now active. Um, so now there are two park sites, the Lewis Street Park and, and Lake Tai Park as well. And uh, we're working on Skyver Park, and that'll be the third park. And we hope to get that in the next uh, month or two um, installed in that park. And oh, one last thing I do want to also point out is that that joint partnership with the dog park at the fairgrounds. Um, so today was, was the last day. I think it's over now. Um, and I actually went over there with my pet, uh, uh, Pooch, and uh, Becky and her dog too. And uh, we enjoyed that, that facility. And I hope that a lot of area residents did as well. Um, so after now that we've concluded this initial season, uh, shortened season, um, we'll, we'll do some debriefings with, with the county staff. I didn't hear anything adverse about anything that went on there. And so I don't expect to hear anything like that. And we, we, we expect and anticipate that we can do this next year and have a, a little bit broader season um, you know, in you know, next year and subsequent years. And that concludes my report. Take any questions. All right, thank you very much, Director Farrell. Any questions for Director Farrell? Go ahead, Council Member Fulcher. It is not a question. I'm just passing along a comment from a resident. Um, they noticed our frequent problem with the tester roundabout and also the theme that we have with the large rocks in the center median on Main Street and wondered why we don't put the immensely large rocks around the tester roundabout. Just passing it along. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, we'll have staff take a look and assess an option like that. All right. Any other questions or comments from the council? All right. We're going to go ahead and move on to the Community Development Department reports, and we will turn to Director Bailey. Director Bailey, go ahead. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Uh, for community development, uh, the, the project highlight this month is that the website for the comp plan update is currently live, and you can, um, you can access through there all of the documents that uh, have been, that have gone into uh, the the framework for the comprehensive plan as well as a lot of the work that the consultants been doing and I do want to point out as I look through there and did not catch this before that the website address on there that's in the um, department report is actually incorrect it should be Monroe 2044 but <clears throat> the the best way to to uh, access it is if you go to the community development page there's a there's a link directly uh, 
directly to the website on there. And it's a good place if you get questions about the comprehensive plan, it's a, a good place to forward people to. On the project highlights, uh, I guess I can announce that it is official that IHOP will be the business that's going into Denny's. There's been a lot of conjecture uh, lately about that. So um, I don't know when they'll be opening their, um, I believe that they'll be doing some tenant improvements in that building, but but that is the, that is the official word. Um, in addition, I wanted to give you an update uh, about the, the the ongoing director uh, in the appeal of the director's interpretation, and this uh, this was regarding the outdoor storage um, interpretation related to the tourist commercial zone. Uh, the 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 parties involved, including the city, have uh, put have made a motion to do a summary judgment, which which means that we would not go to a public hearing. It would be a decision that's made by the hearings examiner, and I and I point that out because if there's um <coughs> and there the update uh, for the department update actually lists a, a hearing date is February 27th, and that's just within just as of last week was uh, has been canceled. Um, so we will hopefully get a, a decision on that within the next. I'm going to say within the next three weeks, but I'll make sure everybody is updated on that. On a staffing level, um, sort of sad news, uh, disappointing news, um, but exciting news for the person involved. Our, our longtime permit tech, Jesse Lether, has uh, taken a job in the in the private sector. Um, so she has she has left the city. She was here for ten years, and so she leaves a a, a big a big hole for us to fill. Um, and we actually have two new permit techs that are one of them is coming on board tomorrow and the uh, second one the middle of next month so um, we're still working with Jesse she is working with a with a, a private company that is doing work locally so um, we can hassle her from the other side of the table now or actually get really good applications from them that's 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 what we're hoping for um with that I'll conclude uh, conclude the report unless anybody has any questions thank you director Bailey are there any questions okay. or comments for director Bailey all right, thank you very much, Director Bailey. We're gonna go ahead now to uh, the Chief of Police, um, Chief Jolly's report, PD report. Thank Chief you, Jolly, Mr. go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, containing your packets, you have the report. I just would like to summarize, going to uh, the last page in our report, page three, just point out a couple of events that happened in January, the 11th annual Jamie Bindle run was conducted, it was a huge success, well attended, really a community type of event, event that brings everybody together. Uh, the other one, we had our department awards ceremony, held it up at the SDA campus. They were kind enough to host us again for our, the second one we've done. And I wanna express my thanks and appreciation to the mayor who stood up there with me and handed out several awards. Several awards. And, uh, kindly spoke some good words of encouragement to the members of the department. So very much appreciated, Mayor. And I'm available for questions if you have any. Thank you, Chief. Any uh, questions or comments for Chief Jolly? Councilor McKinney, go ahead. Thank you for the report. Quick question about the memorial uh, situation, memorial field. I was just curious uh, how they gained access to that building. Was there any damage to the exterior fences? Um, I believe it was forced entry through the okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any other questions uh, for Chief Jolly? All right. Thank you very much, Chief. All right. We're going to go on to the next staff report, and that would be the finance department report. And I'll be looking at uh, <laughs> it says Deborah in here. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. uh, Director Hasser, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as with others, my report is in your packet. It is for January, the first month of a 24 month cycle now. So just kind of reminding everybody of that. Um, and as with every other year, one month does not a trend make. So please keep that in mind as you are looking at the numbers. Um, having said that after 30 plus years, looking at the numbers, there was nothing that jumped out to me of any real concern. 
starting the new biennium. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I'm available for questions. All right, thank you very much. Any questions for Director Hassert? All right, thank you very much, Director Hassert. We're gonna go ahead and move on now to the city administrator report. And again, we'll turn to Director Hassert. <laughs> Director Hassert, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So in your packet is the extended agenda um, on, I can't do up close with my glasses. Um, aggressive, I'm like, <laughs> might make this up to your stomach. But you do so. Um, I think we skipped the slide because our next meeting is March 7th. It is um, the Public Safety Committee meeting. There is going to be an agenda item, I understand, from the police department, so as well as approval of minutes. And if this is your first meeting of the year, um, picking your chair, et cetera, for the, the workshop that evening for council, we have a presentation with regards to our lodging study that was recently done. We'll have discussion with regards to the wastewater treatment plant engineering report. I believe the executive summary review and discussion is ready to go. And then um, the typical administrative reports will be available as well. On March 14th will be a business meeting. Well, first the Legislative Affairs Committee meeting at 6 p.m. Again, approval of minutes, electing a chair and going over your work plan. And then for the business meeting that evening, we will have the usual consent agenda items. Um, also includes <coughs> executing the lease agreement for our temporary office space for the municipal campus construction. We'll have a public hearing for surplus and lease resolution with regards to the food bank building. And then after the public hearing, final action, hopefully with regards to that, it'll all be done by resolution. And then under new business, we will have our, what we call the bond authorization ordinance or the bonds associated with the municipal campus project. We will have both the bond council and bond underwriter here as well, if there are further questions. Um, beyond what's been discussed before. Reports, we should have the economic development, human services, and the HRIT reports, and then the typical administrative reports. We do have an exe executive session scheduled for that evening to discuss potential litigation. So that's the extended agenda. All right, thank you. Turning to council, any, uh, any items? Councilmember Gamble, go ahead. Uh, so I am gonna be out of town next week for traveling for business, okay. but I am going to try to attend remotely. Okay. So I just wanted just in case, but I'll let you know if something precludes me. Okay. Okay. But Thank my you. my intent is to attend remotely. All right. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Gamble. We'll we'll watch for that and um, look forward to email if necessary. If you can't make it, uh, any other comments or concerns from council members? We do have a couple of us who will be gone on March 28th. I think uh, were we in. Okay, that'll be uh, as part of the extended agenda. Do we anticipate wanting to consider canceling that, or is that part of the next report? Okay, <laughs> perfect. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, next week I'll be out of town on vacation, so I will not be logging in. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Hanford. Councilmember Hanford, I was looking at a screen where you are not, and uh, you're you're showing on this screen, sure. but not up there. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, any other uh, questions or comments regarding the extended agenda? All right. Thank you very much, everybody. We're going to move on now to the city administrator report under 10.2. Again, turning to Director Hassert. Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So as the mayor alluded to on the March 28th <coughs> meet meeting, we will have three council members and the mayor attending the National League of Cities Conference. Um, so in order to have, and that is a business meeting, so we would need com confirmation from the remaining four that you will be here, otherwise we will not have a quorum. If you think we, you won't be able to be here, then it would be better that we cancel the meeting tonight um, so that then we can make arrangements for the business items that evening. Right, thank you. Councilmember Gamble, go ahead. So I did. Obviously, we didn't have up what items are potentially. I mean, is that a bit? Do we have a busy night already scheduled, or? No, but there would be the second reading for the bond ordinance. Of course, council can always waive its procedures and adopt at the fourteenth if okay. you wanted to. Okay. But I, but in looking at it earlier with Miss Wyckoff, that was the biggest item we were concerned about. So the only concern mm -hmm. would be the bond, mm -hmm. the second. Would the council be able to consider uh, waiving? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a procedure on the 21st. 21st or do it in one reading on the 14th. Okay. 
just mm -hmm. checking for other alternatives. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm good with I know what you're saying. I'm good with, personally with either alternative because it's an item that we've been discussing for over a year, yep. and it's typically long term tenure stuff is when we make a uh, exception. So, but I'm I'm good with either. Okay. I mean, I if there is not a I just I hate it when we do that, and then we end up with a meeting that is four hours long because <laughs> we stuff it all into one. But if there's nothing else that we're worried about for that business meeting, then I would make a motion to, to cancel the March 28th uh, meeting. So there is a motion on the, the, the screen because we would also would want to cancel the P3 committee that evening as well. Anybody got a heartache on missing out on the P3? No? Sure. All right, I'll move to cancel March 28th, 2023 meeting and then cancel <laughs> P3. Committee meeting. I have a motion from Councilmember Gamble, a second from Councilmember Fulcher to cancel the March 28th, 2023 Council P3 committee meeting and city council meeting. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Oh, I don't need to say that anymore. <laughs> motion passes 7 0. <laughs> Sorry, uh, motion passes 7 0. And if I may, Mr. Mayor, did I also hear that council is comfortable then trying to do the bond ordinance with first and final? Yeah, that's what I heard. Okay, we'll write that up that way. Thank you. Thank you. So, we also have some kudos to share. Um, Jamie Woolworth did receive some nice kudos. He recently created a workspace for the officers at the police station for their book for where they book evidence. And I understand it was very well received. So, we wanted to share that as well as created the name tags that, that the folks that went to AWC and Olympia used. Um, I believe he did that on our 3D printer, so was able to turn that around very quickly. Um, and in community development, uh, Director Bailey had mentioned they recently went, were down to permit techs, and so the entire department came together and was able to take up that, you know, obviously it's not ideal to do that in you know, such short notice <coughs> for long term, um, but especially for Hannah Maynard, um, really stepped up and not only took on the extra work, was, but was still able to manage to get all her daily tasks done as well. And that did not go unnoticed. And then also Monday, we had our first records roundup day. Um, this is something that Joe, or City Clerk Wyckoff has been instituting here for us to get into the habit of annually going through and doing um, like a records retention cleanup day, kind of like an inventory. <clears throat> Um, because this is the first time we've really done that. We have a lot of records to get through. So we're going to do this monthly for a while. Friday or Monday was our first one. And I got to say the enthusiasm that people showed to be able to do that was just remarkable. I have to admit, I myself spent about five hours getting rid of all, over 10,000 emails on that day. Yeah, I'm surprised IT hasn't come after me. Um, but I am 10,000 emails lighter now and still working on it. Um, we will be doing a second records roundup day on March 27th. That is a Monday as well. And just so council is aware, we are actually going to close city operations to the public. Um, but the expectation then is all staff will be doing nothing but working on cleaning out and documenting and destroying what records that we can for the records retention. Act. So, <clears throat> and that's all I have to do with this evening, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you very much, Director Hasser. Um, any questions um, or comments for Director Hassert on that report? All right, thank you. We're going to go ahead and move on to the mayor's report now, 10.3. Uh, so a couple items. One, uh, the month of March is Women's History Month and International Women's Day. And so I've got a proclamation that uh, is in your packets. Um, I will just take a moment here to, um, to express part of what's in that proclamation and I am stalling as I'm pulling it up on my screen. Uh, so the third recital there is just recognizing that uh, women serve in our community in many places, including businesses, nonprofits, government, and that I'm thankful for the contributions of each of the women working for the city of Monroe, including the following women in leadership roles, uh, council member Heather Fulcher, council member Tammy Kinney, judge Jessica Ness, city administrator Deborah Knight, finance director Becky Hassert, court administrator Pam Haley, and city clerk Jody Wyckoff. Um, I'll go ahead and add to that list, too, that we have a lot of women in leadership positions here in our community. Uh, we have one here tonight, our president, uh, the president of the school district board. Uh, I appreciate all of the work that you do and uh, your colleagues there as well. So 
Um, I would just encourage people that over Women's History Month and International Women's Day to try to learn something new and, um, and give thanks for the many women that, are, uh, that have been involved in many different aspects of life. And I'm just gonna take this moment to recognize my own mother. Um, she retired as a captain in the United States Navy. She went up for Admiral. And uh, I used to like to joke that my mother wore combat boots. Uh, she used to go to ADAC Alaska uh, from time to time and uh, do things that I never got to hear the details of, um, keeping us safe, uh, probably watching out for hot air balloons. But um, anyway, <laughs> I, uh, um, do appreciate uh, the work that everybody has done in that area, and I think it's important that we take a moment uh, to recognize uh, all that work. So thank you, everybody. The next item that I want to take a moment to address on the agenda um, without <clears throat> without looking completely at the screen there is just as uh, three of the council members had pointed out, we had a very successful trip down to Olympia with the Association of Washington Cities uh, legislative, legislative Action Days. Um, Director Roberts joined us because there was quite a bit of work that we were doing around 522 and Highway 2. Um, and our government affairs team that we have, uh, Luke Esser and Jim Hedricks, are doing a phenomenal job. Um, they are giving me a report and staff report every Friday. Uh, the senior leadership team and I review very late sometimes on Thursday nights, if not very early Friday morning, um, a, uh, a summary of where bills are and uh, then we meet as a staff with them after the Association of Washington Cities meets at the lunch hour, and we go over the bills that are coming up. Um, so I think we've got a really strong presence and a really, under, a really strong understanding of what's going on in Olympia this time, uh, this year. And as Councilmember Gamble had pointed out, um, we did a really great job of forging relationships with the cities in the 12th Legislative District. Um, <clears throat> I'm thankful that uh, Mayor uh, Okerlander from Duval had already talked with the Snoqualmie Valley um, cities that are in the, now in the 12th Legislative District about the importance of 522. When we were meeting with two of our representatives from the 12th Legislative District, um, I think one of them brought up 522. Yeah, and so there were a couple of cities down Valley, uh, the Snoqualmie Valley, uh, which is the other valley that we're part of, that talked about the importance of finishing 522. Uh, so it wasn't just along uh, the Snohomish County cities. And that's gonna be really important uh, for us to get work done on 522. Um, and uh, then we still got together with the 39th. So we still got to see Sultan and Lake Stevens and uh, still met with our two representative, our former two representatives, Eslick and Lowe, and also with State Senator Wagner. Um, and it's, one of those things that I, I think that each one of you, when you get a chance to go down to Olympia and to develop relationships, because I'm not always going to be here, Councilmember Gamble won't always be here, and so on and so forth, that we need to make certain that we're looking at the generations who are going to be sitting up here after us and, and helping to mentor them about the importance of going to Olympia, developing these relationships, even if they're different political orientations as yourself, because it's what's going to make us successful as a city. So. Um, it was a, a great trip down to Olympia, and, and I think we got a lot of great work done. Um, <clears throat> this morning, um, I, uh, let me see, Thursday or Friday last week, I learned that the Snohomish County Committee on Improved Transportation had been asked to uh, give feedback to Senator, State Senator Mark Elias, uh, who is the Transportation Committee Chair uh, in the Senate, uh, therefore has a lot of influence over the transportation budget. Um, he had asked uh, SKIT, as they're called, to provide some information about their priorities for transportation projects in Snohomish County. Um, it was very important for me to see 522 on that list, and I was thankful on Thursday or Friday morning to see that 522 was one of the projects on the list. Um, I shared that with, um, with our government, government affairs folks, uh, with Luke and Jim, and they noted that um, that sort of request hadn't been made to other jurisdictions. So it was good that there was deference being paid to SKIT. Um, I attended the meeting this morning along with uh, Director Roberts and others. You were there, yes? Yes, okay. Um, <laughs> I, gave you, I gave you a nod, even though I didn't double check. And uh, they did, <clears throat> 522 was on the list um, still. Uh, in fact, after they stopped talking about those things associated with linked light rail up I-5, 522 was the first project that was outside of the, the contiguous the, the contiguous UGA, which is 
sort of those semi-rural cities like Monroe. So um, I appreciated that that's still on the list. Um, We're still advocating to move the funding for 5T2 earlier in their multi-year uh, budget. Um, their transportation budget is just like our capital facilities budget where they're doing allocations in future years. And the governor had moved uh, 522 into future, future, future years. And we're trying to pull it back into uh, nearer years. Um, so we're, that's what we're advocating for right now. Kind of sucks being on defense right now. I'd rather be on offense, but right now we're in a defensive position trying to retain what the legislature had approved last year. Um, but everybody's aware that we want to get 522 finished. So uh, we'll continue working that uh, route. <laughs> that was funny. Um, before I move on to the rail safety, um, I see that Councilmember Scarborough has indicated that he'd like to speak. So, Councilmember Scarborough, go ahead. Yeah, just in regards to the funding for 522, did you get an explanation of where our $24 million went? Um, it was think, used and then it disappeared? I think the short answer of that is they kicked it into future years and that. Part of the problem was capacity for uh, DOT. So part of the problem is a labor issue uh, getting projects done. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to focus money in the near term on projects that they think that they can get done as opposed to projects that they have a lower probability of thinking they can get done. I'm going to turn to uh, Director Roberts to clarify what I've just said, uh, especially if I got something wrong in that, but that's, uh, that's the loose understanding. Director Roberts, go ahead. Mary, you hit the nail on the head. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. So you briefed me well. Okay. <laughs> any other questions, Councilmember Scarborough? Okay, great. Um, any other questions on uh, what I've presented so far? And then I'll move on to the rail safety legislative agenda. All right, thank you. So the rail safety legislative agenda, <clears throat> we've all seen uh, a number of very significant train accidents. Um, across the nation. We had one right over I-5 a few years ago where a passenger train went off the rails. And we have a major rail line going right through Monroe. And as I was watching some news clips of, of a mayor at answering questions of a community, I thought to myself, wow, we should be better prepared than that mayor was to answer those questions. And at the end of the day, even without that, we need to be taking this seriously. So. One of the things that I just wanted to share with the council is that staff is working with uh, um, with other folks, including Strategies 360 potentially, to help come up with a legislative agenda that says, hey, these things were in place at one point in time to improve safety on our rail lines. We really need to have these things addressed. And, um, uh, and so I'll be bringing forward to the council for your consideration a list of what those items are over the next couple of meetings. The idea is that when we're going to NLC at the end of March, that in addition to doing the usual advocacy for uh, silent train crossings and um, and uh, grade separated crossing, AKA a bridge over the train tracks, um, that we also need to be addressing some of these uh, significant safety concerns. I don't think any one of us wants to come home to the type of accident that happened in Palestine just um, what, 24 days ago or so. Um, we we don't want that happening in, in our community. We certainly don't want it happening in anybody's community. And if we can um, advocate for, for changes, um, we're in a position to do that. So with that said, I brought that up to the Snohomish County Mayors yesterday at our Snohomish County Mayors meeting. Um, I had mayors right away jump on, uh, jump on the idea of being part of that legislative agenda that included Arlington, Marysville, I think Muckleteo and Sultan. Um, I'm sure that there are others that were interested also, um, but those are the people on the Zoom meeting that I could see their heads going up and down and them saying yes uh, in that quick check. So um, either concurrent to bringing something to you or slightly out of order to that, I will share that with, uh, with some of those mayors to see if they're uh, also supportive of that. I will add also that uh, Mayor Nering will be going to um, uh, to NLC, and I think there was one other mayor that was going to be going to NLC, and so there may be an opportunity for us to talk about rail safety with um, agency staff at NLC um, as a group, not just uh, not just us individually. So uh, that's something we'll be working on. Does anybody have any concerns about what I've shared there? All right, thank you. So the next item then, and I think the last item, 
is uh, is uh, House Bill 1650. Um, so again, we're tracking bills really well down in Olympia. Uh, this is one that unfortunately I did not realize was occurring until um, noon. Whoops, noon on Friday. <clears throat> There's a House bill that has not yet advanced to the Senate. We don't know if it will or will not. Uh, but the House bill would would as you're aware, the city of Monroe right now prohibits the sale, manufacturing, and growing of cannabis and cannabis-related products within city limits. And this House bill would um, repeal the prohibition statewide, including with the city of Monroe, and I think it was 2027, um, unless there were a vote of the people to retain the prohibition. And so the the thought here is to see if the council wanted me to submit comments to our legislators that um, since the council can amend or repeal the existing law or place the question to the public at any point in time through an advisory vote or residents can submit an initiative or a referendum to the council to compel a change to that law that the council would find that it's not necessary that the state adopt this law that preempts our local code. And so my ask to the council is, is that something that you would like me to share with our legislators tomorrow? And I'll go with Councilmember Fulcher, go ahead. I think that, yeah, would you please oppose that? I, I am, we don't need, we don't need our legislature putting their fingers in at our level. Um, our people know that they have good communication with their next level up government, which is us. We don't need to be told by the state what we can and cannot do regarding our communities. So I'm in support of you. I'm in support of you opposing it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Councilmember Gamble, go ahead. Yeah, I, I am as well. I mean, I guess the other piece is it's still federally illegal. That's Correct. It, the, the whole reason why we have what we have in place is to try to protect the citizens so that we're not out of compliance with federal so that we can still get grant all, all those different things that could potentially come. So I would prefer to keep us in, in that until we get some sort of a federal that would put us in a different position with uh, federal law. So that's, that's why we have what we have. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Councilmember Hanford, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I concur. All right. Thank you. Councilmember Fisher. Yes, I also agree with the other council members. Um, there are some concerns there. Um, obviously, cannabis still being um, against the federal laws. Um, also, it being a cash only business um, creates some problems with that as well. Um, I, for one, also have some issues with the smell. I mean, uh, we have our um, wastewater treatment plant that goes through <clears throat> extreme measures to keep the scent down of that um place and if you've been around any of these pot shops um it permeates for blocks so i think that's also something that needs to be addressed so i am uh with the other council members on this thank you all right thank you all right uh so go ahead council member kenny i concur all right thank you um council member scarborough concur all right thank you and um council member davis i suspect that you don't oppose either Okay, sounds good. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll submit um, comments to this effect through, so it may not be a memo, but what it may be is just comments to this effect through uh, Luke and Jim, our government affairs team. They'll make certain that they get those comments to our uh, our legislators on the 12th, but also the 39th, since we still have relationships with them, and also to our two state senators. In the event that this does advance out of the House, um, there will be a public, there will be a hearing on the bill within the Senate. And so uh, there will be an opportunity for us to formally lodge against uh, the proposed bill if it makes it to the Senate. Um, I can also let the council know in the event that council members would like to go in and, and give public testimony um, should that become an opportunity, all right? All right, thank you. Council Member Gamble, go ahead. All the, the items that you were going down and checking the box on and um, were with, uh, with Olympia, I forgot one of the items I was going to talk about with that trip. Okay. Um, 
that you know we talk about a lot about how this particular body or group that really kind of got through the, the two years of COVID and craziness and all that. And then there was one moment during the trip where a particular uh, elected person, I'm not even going to say who it was because it doesn't matter, but there was a, a question that was posed to that individual that uh, about how toxic and divisive the political environment is and how um, it's hard to get people to even run in local because of how toxic it is and, and how do we go about changing that? Um, and I felt they just absolutely fumbled the question because they, they the answer that came back was, well, yeah, that's really difficult and I don't know how we do that. And it became just a, just a very partisan response. And what was really cool was that everybody, all of us that were around the table where the consensus was, this is not difficult. You model it. <clears throat> you model it. Period. We want to get through divisiveness, toxicity. You model it as a council. And what I just wanted to reiterate that because what I appreciate the most about this body is that we, you guys, everybody up here does that. And yeah, we get into some very good conversations, um, and, you know, across the board. But what I always appreciate um, is that uh, it doesn't get to this level. <laughs> Uh, that's being uh, that's being discussed. So the more we can spread that word amongst them when we have opportunities with our legislators that we can call them out anytime there's posturing around this, you know, partisan type stuff and going toxic and um, please take advantage of it and call them out on that side of the equation. So anyway, sorry. That's no, okay. Thank you. Sorry. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I do want to note also that um, uh, the AWC has uh, come out against 1650 also. I forgot to mention that. Councilmember Kenny, go ahead. I just wanted to follow up on Councilmember Gamble's comments, which I totally agree with. And uh, yes, we had some really great conversations in Olympia. And I'd like to share uh, one thing that I often uh, say to people when they ask me, are you a Democrat or a Republican? I will say I'm neither right nor left, I'm forward. And we did say that to someone in the uh, <laughs> in one of our meetings uh, during that time, and and he really enjoyed that. So I thought that that was was great, you know, with the whole divisiveness, um, not to to be, um, you know, completely on one side or the other, but let's all work together and move forward and get things done. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I I will I'll just chime in. Um, one of the things that I really value about doing work at a local level is that we are nonpartisan. And I will admit that having worked with partisan elected officials for poor partisan elected officials that especially those that have that experience in Olympia have a different paradigm, a different frame of reference um, than people that have worked as elected officials for cities. Um, you can also see that in our legislators. Uh, our legislators are all, I'm thinking this through, our, our legislators are all from city service or county service. And even though they are of a party, they have a tendency to to be nonpartisan in how they approach issues. Um, I, for one, really dislike the partisan nature of the way things are uh, in this country and um, would would agree that uh, that we need to make more space for the majority of us who would at home declare ourselves as nonpartisan and to work together. And uh, my own cynicism is that people make money and uh, off of that partisan divide, whether it's entertainment on a news station or comedy or the parties that employ people. And that it's sad that government, which should be boring, has become a place of how you sustain your family and how you make money. And um, I may be cynical, but here I think we do a really good job of just governing. And that's all we should be doing once we get elected. So um, Jason, thanks for bringing that up. And uh, I'm sorry that, and I'm gonna name him, that our governor thought that it was a difficult answer. So, because um, it's not a difficult answer. It's being just, it's being kind, it's being humble, and it's caring for your neighbor. All right. Does anybody have anything else to add this evening? We have no further business. And uh, I was right, eight o'clock. I think you extended your just to 
show me off. <laughs> <laughs> we are adjourned. <laughs> Unless there's objection, we're adjourned. Have a great evening, everybody. Good night.